Mathematica is renowned as the world's ultimate environment for computation. But let's take a look at just some of the basic types of calculations that are possible and how intuitive it is to compute just about anything in Mathematica. So let's make a new section. Again, you can use the cell insertion assistant uh, or the format menu or a keyboard shortcut. Let's call this section basic calculations. And then let's make it a new subsection and we'll call that uh, exact versus approximate calculations. As we saw in the previous video, Mathematica will always give you the most exact answer possible. For example, let's take uh, 224 divided by 24,248 and we'll evaluate that calculation. We'll get a result of 4 over 433. This is the exact representation of this quantity and it is reduced as much as possible, which is great. No other work needed on our part to get that simplest possible representation. But perhaps I want the numerical approximation of that result instead. I can use a command called in to do that. While almost all Mathematica commands are full words, in is one of the few exceptions because it just gets used so often. So I'm going to mouse down and start a new input cell. I'll type in and then I get in, then I put in my pair of square brackets and finally I put in what I want to approximate. In this case, I'm going to copy and paste 4 over 433. When I evaluate with shift enter, then I get a numerical result. I can also give in a second argument, which is the number of digits I want to approximate. So let's put in our second argument by adding a comma to separate what I want to approximate and the number of digits I want to uh, in my approximation. And I'm going to approximate to 100 digits. When I reevaluate, I get a much longer approximation. Now sometimes you might not always uh, know that you want an, an approximate result until you finish whatever you're doing. In those cases, there's a neat shorthand that you can use. So let's say I'm adding up a bunch of fractions like uh, one half plus one third plus one fourth plus one fifth. When I finish, I realize that I really need a numerical result. Uh, so I know that I can use the in command, but I don't want to copy and paste that result. In that case, I can use percent sign, which is a shorthand way of referring to the last output that Mathematica generated. So if I ev evaluate in, open square bracket, percent sign, and then close that square bracket, I'll get an appro a numerical approximation of my result. It's important to know that percent uh, refers to the last output, no matter where you are in the notebook. So if you give your notebook to someone else, um, and they do then things out of sequence, that percent sign might not refer to the same output as it did during your session. The percent sign shorthand is handy when you need to quickly grab an output, but it's not something you want to use when building up a complicated series of commands uh, or a program. But another thing uh, to know is that Mathematica will give you the most exact result possible given the inputs you have provided. If you give Mathematica approximate inputs to begin with, then you are going to get an approximate result. For example, if I instead type 224.0 over 24,248 and evaluate, uh, I'll get a decimal result because this input you provide uh, to Mathematica was already in decimal form to start with. Adding a point zero or just a decimal point, uh, that will work as well. Uh, so if you, if you want a quick and dirty way to force Mathematica to give you an approximate result, uh, that way you'll know uh, that's what you want to do up front. So let's look at another example of, a, of exact computation within Mathematica. Let's open that classroom assistant palette again from the palettes menu. Uh, go down to the, we'll go to the basic command section. We'll choose matrix commands tab. Now from here, let's insert a two by two matrix by clicking the icon and filling in the entries as six. And then you can tab to jump to the next placeholder, uh, six, one, and five and then hit shift enter to evaluate. When I evaluate, I see that my result is a list of lists. In this case, a list containing six and six and another list containing one and five. That's because in Mathematica, matrices are simply lists of lists. So in this particular case, Mathematica just says, yep, you entered a matrix and, and here it is. So let's actually do something with this matrix. Let's create a new input cell uh, and click the inverse button on the palette. Now, we have a couple of ways to get our matrix in here. We can use that percent sign again, 
Um, or we can just use good old copy and paste to mainly put our matrix in there. But we can also use these buttons in the calculator section to copy the input or output from above. Unlike the percent sign shorthand, these buttons are sensitive as to where you are in the notebook. So since our inverse command is right below our matrix, clicking input from above will bring in the matrix input and not the fractional uh, addition that's higher up in our notebook. When we evaluate, we see that once again we get exact results. So as before, we can use in to get an approximation, but this time let's type in in, uh, type in the brackets, and then use output from above to bring in our result to approximate, and then evaluate to get the result. For any keyboard uh, junkies like myself, you can find the keyboard shortcuts on uh, to copy the input from above and output from above in the insert menu. It's just Alt L and uh, Shift Alt L on Windows. Okay, so now that we've seen ways that we can feed the output from one calculation into a new command, let's look at how we can create variable assignments to store the results of operations. Let's create a new subsection uh, called variable assignment, and then use the down arrow key to start a new input cell. And here we are going to create a variable named A and give it a value of 224 over 24,248. We do this by entering A equals 224 divided by uh, 24248 and evaluating the result. Now if I enter in A and evaluate it, I get back 4 over 433. I can use A in any command I want now. For example, let's square A. Going back to the palette, I'm going to go to the calculator section and choose the icon for superscript, which pastes in a template, and I'm going to enter in A to the second power as another option. Uh, remember, you can use tab to jump to the next placeholder in one of these templates to get that result. You can also enter this uh, two-dimensional expression of A squared by entering in A and then hitting Control-6 uh, on your keyboard. This keyboard shortcut is displayed when you mouse over the icon in the palette. And it's easy to remember since the caret, which is used to indicate exponentiation, is above the 6 on the keyboard uh, as well. There are lots of other easy to remember shortcuts for entering in input, like Control uh, Fraction Sign will give you a 2D fractional input, and Control 2 will give you a square root symbol. You can also uh, find a complete listing in the documentation by searching for keyboard shortcuts. Now that I have uh, defined A to be a specific value, it's important to remember that definition because if I do something like expand uh, open square bracket and then parentheses A plus B uh, to the third power and close that square bracket, the result I get automatically substitutes in the specific value I have defined for A. If I want to throw away the variable assignment, I can do that then by using the clear command. So let's evaluate clear uh, of A, and we can test that uh, it's really gone by reevaluating that expand command, which now returns a purely symbolic result, since I do not have any variable assignments for A or B uh, in my Mathematic uh, session. Okay, so let's move on to defining our own function. First, let's create a new subsection, and we'll call this one creating functions. Now let's make a new input cell and we are going to enter in F open square bracket X underscore and then close square bracket. The square brackets mean that they will surround our uh, function arguments and the F will be our function's name. Now if you remember earlier I said that Wolfram language commands are capitalized and that's that's true for all the Wolfram language commands in Mathematica itself. That's not to say that you cannot capitalize the names of any functions you create, because uh, you can, but I always like to give my functions lowercase uh, names because that makes it much easier on me or my colleagues to tell what are functions that I've defined versus what are built-in Wolfram language commands. Okay, so let's continue with our function definition. The next part we want to enter is uh, colon equals, uh, using the colon sign and then the equal sign. And that means our function is going to use delayed assignment, which is what you usually want to do with your functions, uh, but you can read more about this topic in the documentation if it interests you. Now on the right-hand side, I have to tell Mathematica what I want this function to do. 
So let's make our function return the expression x squared plus 2x plus 1. So we enter that in. I'm going to use uh, keyboard shortcuts to typeset the exponent. But you can use the caret to input this as 1D input, or you can use the palettes to get the typeset template if you want. Now that our function is defined, we need to hit uh, shift enter to evaluate it. We don't get a result when we evaluate it because all we have done at this point is to define our function. We haven't invoked it to do anything uh, just yet. So let's use our function to do something. When we, when we defined it, you'll notice the underscore character that was tacked on to the function argument x. This told Mathematica that I didn't want to reserve x specifically for my function, uh, but rather that x was sort of a placeholder for me to fill in with values later on. This means that we can use our f function with all sorts of different types of arguments. So let's, let's try it out. For example, uh, we can pass the value 5 to our function by evaluating f of 5. And when we do that, we see that we get back 36, since 5 squared plus 2 times 5 plus 1 equals uh, 36. Let's try f of 5.5, and when we do that, we get a result of 42.25. So our function works with any type of input, which is really useful. Let's try a different type of argument. Uh, in Mathematica, if you have some text inside of a pair of quotation marks, that is referred to as a string. If we pass a string to our function, like asking for the result of f of, quotes, dog, we see that dog gets slotted in for the placeholder, and we get a result of 1 plus 2 times dog plus dog squared. So far during this video, we have seen that the e single equal sign is used for variable assignment, and then colon equal sign is used when defining functions. There's also one more really important type of equal sign to learn, and that is the double equal sign. And it's used when you are solving equations. There are different types of solving commands in Mathematica, but one of the most commonly used versions is, coincidentally enough, named solve. So let's use it uh, to solve for the roots of a polynomial. We type in solve, and we can then uh, use the command completion menus to create a template of what we need to fill in, which is basically some expression that we are trying to solve, and then the variable or list of variables that we want to solve for. In this case, let's enter in the canonical quadratic formula equation. We start by typing in A, and then I want to pause here and say that you can either press space and then type x squared, or you can type A and then put in an asterisk to indicate multiplication and then x squared. But what you can't do is type in AX squared without either a space or an explicit asterisk because Mathematica will not recognize that the A and X are separate symbols. It will assume that you are using some symbol called X or AX and that you are squaring it. So when you use the asterisk, which is explicit multiplication, or use the space, which is implied multiplication, then Mathematica recognizes that those are different symbols and will treat them differently, which is what we want for this example. Okay, so continuing on our expression, we can then enter in b space x uh, for b times x plus c equal equals zero. And this is important because you will notice when we, here we use the double equal sign. The double equal sign stands for testing equality. So you need to use it in situations where you are entering an equation and only use the sequel, single equal sign when defining a variable. Now, for the last part, we just need to enter in x, since that's the only variable that we are solving for, and we evaluate using shift enter to get the results uh, that we all learned from our school days. We can also use our own function which, with commands like solve. So let's try uh, solve of f of x equals equals 36 and solve for x and we will uh, see that either x equals 5 or x equals negative 7, which uh, both satisfy the equation. Now that we've covered variable assignments and function definitions, uh, we'll move on to look at how to create and customize 2D and 3D graphics in Mathematica.